Hello and welcome to another album analysis. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the 19th studio album from Scottish rock band Simple Minds titled Direction of the Heart. Simple Minds are a band known for their string of hits released across the course of the 1980s with songs such as Belfast Child, Alive and Kicking and most notably Don't You Forget About Me which featured in the very iconic film The Breakfast Club released in 1985 featuring in the end scenes of that particular film. Only two members of the band are from the original lineup when the band first got together in the late 70s. Jim Kurt on vocals and Charlie Birchall on guitar but they have rounded out their roster with a whole host of other talent which will certainly make a big appearance on on this album. After the 1980s, the band's popularity did begin to dwindle, but that didn't stop them from producing a series of albums. Their most recent album before this one came out in 2018, which was Between Two Worlds, which took a much slower pace than what we're going to be seeing on this particular album. So will it be filled with heart and soul or just a head full of dreams? Let's take a look at it track by track. The opening track is Vision Thing, which was actually released as the lead single from this album, and it's very easy to see why. It certainly is a bit of an earworm. It has that inert catching to it, prevalently because of Charlie Birchall's guitar. We're going to be seeing a lot of really interesting things done by him on this album. I'd argue that it's probably some of the best guitar work he's done since their 1985 album Once Upon a Time. He really has rolled back the ears with this album and produced some really fine work, which helps to give it that pacing, gives it that catchiness that really makes it a very strong song. It is also a bit of a tribute to Kerr's late father as well. So again, there's going to be a lot of things rolling back the ears on this. They wanted to make a lot of tributes to different things they done over the years and we're going to be seeing that a little bit later on as well but this song certainly feels like a modernized version of 1980s simple minds when they were at their peak when they were at their best and that's what's something they really want to lean on with this album and it's easy to see how they've done that in this song the lyrics aren't particularly the strongest on this particular track. I feel like they're very vague, which could make them more accessible to people. Vision thing could apply to anything. It could be the fact that you have the ability to see certain things, whether it be the band applying that to music. It could also be, because it's a tribute to Kerr's father, it could also be the fact that he had the vision to see where the band was going to go. So it does leave it to that very big and open interpretation, but it also also make it a little bit vague at times. What is vision thing? What's this thing that you have a vision of? So a little bit of vagueness in the lyrics, but a Apart from that, this is certainly a very strong track opening the album. Then we dive straight into another tribute track with First You Jump. Now this definitely feels like you'd imagine you 2 recording this. That's exactly what it sounds like and that is for good reason. This is actually going back to a time where they did share a stage with you 2 They've drawn the influence from those memories. You're taking in the new view, becoming all that you're meant to. They were taking ideas in from other bands and really making it their own version and pushing that forward. And something that helps with the catchiness on this track and you're going to see this quite a lot throughout the album is this use of rhyme there's so much of it built in lots of rhyming lyrics which really just add to that catchiness because the words fit together so nicely like a jigsaw and we've also got this very strong blending of instruments they've really done very well in rounding out the band because one thing they actually did with this believe it or not is they actually recorded it in different locations most of the band actually recorded from london due to covid lockdown whilst jim and charlie were actually on other parts of the world recording their parts so it's interesting to see how it's come together, how they blended it so well despite not recording in a studio together. Driving in at number three, we do have Human Traffic featuring Russell Mayle of Sparks. Now, this is great to see them bringing him in. I feel like th that Sparks was one of the influences on Simple Minds. But the problem is when you've got one of the members of the most influential duos of the past 60 years joining you, you need to make better use of him. He's very strong in the chorus, working with Jim Kerr on the vocals, and they do a great harmony together. But I wish he had just maybe one verse to himself. I really would have liked to have seen that. Just if you're getting in for special appearance then please make more use of him but outside of that the track is quite strong I like the themes that we've got revolving around this about the idea of human traffic about just we're going in a direction we're on a destiny we've got a destination in mind we're making our journey through this life and again it's that reflectiveness that we're seeing throughout most of these tracks and we're going to continue to see as we do progress through it so some great meanings just unfortunately not making as much use of Russell Mail as I would have liked to have seen but outside of that it certainly is quite a strong track 
In a track before, we do have Who Killed Truth. Now, this has a very acoustic guitar, slow build opening. It is very nice to see that variation. They're playing with a lot of these different instruments that they've got. They've got um, God Goody on acoustic guitar for this particular track. Um, he's kind of been providing a lot of the acoustics for this album, which is great to see. Just again, giving each member of the band their time in the spotlight, just not having one thing that is super prevalent throughout the entire album. And it's got some really nice programming as well thrown in there. They've made use of a few of these electronic elements they've thrown in interspersed use of the keyboards and really nice to see that they've done that and it's not overpowering at times and I think actually this song does actually feature some some of the strongest guitar work from Charlie Birchall on the album as well unfortunately despite all these really great elements it's not the most gripping track it does have a bit of a haunting feel almost a dark at times which is uh, quite interesting to see that real contrast again that they're throwing in at different times just to really break the album up and stop it from being too repetitive so certainly a strong track but not one of the most memorable ones on the album. Then we have Solstice Kiss, which has a, an almost Asian culture inspired opening. Again, just throwing something new into the mix. They've got a hodgepodge of different ingredients that they're really putting in to make this wonderful broth of theirs. And it's great to see something else that we don't get to see in too many tracks really in modern day. It does have these very, very soft backing vocals from Sarah Brown as well, who is the backing vocalist. So again, making good use of all the different members within the band, really pulling them in, bringing them to the forefront, giving them their time in the spotlight. Uh, we do actually also have some subtle bongo drums, just really add that nice essence to this track. It's a very soothing track overall, which is really great. It just gives us that little bit of wind down after we've had some kind of higher paced tracks that we've throughout the start of the album. And it does actually build, believe it or not, into almost a very strong stadium filler track. I like this variety. We're starting off very slow, very peaceful, and then it builds and has some really nice elevated points in the track. So a very another very strong track. This is actually probably one of the standouts on this album. I think it's certainly one of those unsung heroes that we do have that not everybody's probably going to pay too much attention to but just that nice build throughout this song just leading into these big elevated points really does make it stand out as we do hit the halfway point in the album we do have act of love now this is a song that was originally penned in around 77 78 it's almost like it's been sat in a wine barrel just maturing for the past 40 odd years and they finally got to the point where they feel that they could release it as a track which is crazy i think that you're 19 albums in and you've just hit that point where you think no this old track we should release this now and it really does has worked for this it's instrumentally it does show those signs it does go back to their very early work it does make very great use of keys and synths and just really builds in a lot of these strong 80s elements or certainly late 70s when you had craft work really starting to pull synths to the forefront of music so it's great to see those elements really pulled in so they've kind of Although it's a track that's being released on a modern album, it has those tiebacks, those nostalgic tiebacks, which is they've really wanted to do. And you can see the elements of this song where it does tie back to those original times where it was written. So it's great to see that finally being pulled, effectively, not from the grave, but from the cradle at this point in the band's career. Then for track seven, we do have Natural, which has these edgy scratching guitars that bring us back to the present day. They're really pulling us back to the modernized world with this opening. It just really does sort of all of a sudden just go come from nowhere and catches you a little bit off guard. It does also make more use of these poetic choruses that do give it that bounciness, give it that real structure, which is great to see because it does give the song such a strong flow. Unfortunately, out of those two outside of those two elements, it's not really a memorable track. It is one of, another one on the album that does feel at times a little bit like a filler. Then for track 8 we do have Planet Zero, a song that gives Sharice a chance to shine on the drums, really letting them come to the forefront. Again, just taking it in turns, really great to see that they're doing this, but it doesn't have the same strong energy as some of the earlier tracks. And again, a lot of these songs really do have these strong messages and strong elements in the idea of Planet Zero being this idea that we've only got one planet and it's becoming Planet Zero because we're just wasting it away as the years roll by. So they have got some strong messages. Unfortunately, it doesn't really come come across all too well with this track again feels like a little bit of a filler we're losing that moment strong momentum that we had at the beginning of the album which is a real shame to see rounding out the standard version of the album we do have the walls come down which is a cover of the calls 1983 single and this is definitely a tribute to michael breen who actually originally wrote the song and toured with simple minds over the 1980s so i can't touch too much on the actual songwriting because it's not one of their songs but great to see them again doing a cover of a track just 
really putting that nostalgic factor on, really talking about their memories that they've got, whether it be touring with you too, with The Call, just really some of the influences they've had from Sparks. So they're really just doing this full walk down memory lane and really making the occasional reference to how the world has changed since they were at their heights effectively in the 1980s. Then we do have what is effectively the first of two bonus tracks. Track 10 effectively in Direction of the Heart, Talmania 2022. This is very much a synth-laden track that almost takes us through this crystalline landscape. It's really sort of nice how it tiptoes through it at a very leisurely pace. And it just, it really shows just the ability of what the band can do, even still to this day. I mean, after 19 albums, they're still producing very strong tracks. The whole album has not got, it's not packed full of incredible, Incredible tracks, but they certainly have those moments where they can really shine and really show what they are capable of. Then for the second bonus track, we do have Wonder Times, another guitar-driven track. It's great to see this rounding out the bonus version of the album, just really giving Charlie Birchall that forefront again because he's been wonderful on this album. Some of the work that he's been done, if you're listening to it for the first time or the second time, or just listen to it really and paying attention, just focus on his guitar work. It really is some of probably the strongest work he's done in quite some time. And even some of the lyrics as well are really strong in this. I still feel nostalgic, I still feel this heartbeat. And this song really touches on that finalised idea that although their heads are now currently in the modern day, their bodies have aged, their heart is still in the 1980s, their heart's full of nostalgia, and that's what they want to kind of push across with this album. It just sums up the concept of what they're trying to kind of push along and really just kind of give this idea of how they feel as people and how they look at modern world and how they reflect back on their music. So it is a very reflective, very nice album just to kind of have that nod back to the time where they were in their prime and just cover a couple of different topics from then until now. So overall, I'm going to have to give this album a 7.5 out of 10. It certainly has a very strong nod to the nostalgia that they've built in. Vision thing just being a tribute to Kerr's late father, really having some nice elements in there. They are references to U2, getting Russell Mail involved, and just having a cover of The Call's 1983 single, The Wars Come Down. These are great nostalgic factors. There are elements in the instrumentation as well, which really nod back to some of their older sounds, but keeping it almost a modernised style on some of the tracks. Unfortunately, the thing that does let this album down is towards the sort of just past the middle point where we do start to lose that early momentum from those earlier track songs such as Natural and Planet Zero don't have that same catchiness pulling power as some of the earlier tracks we did see and although it's great to see some of the styles that they pulled in some of the elements they've really built in some of the instruments such as the bongos the crystalline sounds as well those are great elements. I really love that they've done that. But unfortunately, just the part of the album that does really fall flat. If this was maybe six or seven songs, if you took out those couple and just kept the bonus tracks in the standard version, you may have been pushing towards an 8 and 8.5. But unfortunately, there's just those few tracks that do not quite hit the mark. But I do feel this is some of the strongest art music they've produced since Once Upon a Time, which was a gargantuan album. It's probably one of the strongest albums of as a whole album of the 1980s. So to come start coming close to that standard it's the first thing they've done in quite some time so i hope they can continue to produce music like this but unfortunately just wasn't able to really reach that t same tier as once upon a time but still a great effort from the band so that's everything for today's video, but as always, please let me know your thoughts about the album in the comments below. Let me know if you feel it kind of almost lives up to the same standard of Once Upon a Time, or if there's any particular tracks that you really do love from this album and think are just absolutely fantastic. would love to hear your thoughts. And if you do want to see more content like this, then please do feel free to subscribe, and I will see you in the next album analysis.